Story 28 of 30 Ghost Stories by Various Authors. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Boy Possessed by S. McCurgy. I think it was in 1906 that in one of the principal cities in India the son of a rich man became ill. He had a high fever and delirium, and in his insensible state he was constantly talking in a language which was some kind of English, but which the relatives could not understand. The boy was reading in one of the lower classes of school, and hardly knew the English language. When the fever would not abate for twenty-four hours, a doctor was sent for. The doctor arrived, and went to see the patient in the sick room. The boy was lying on the bed with his eyes closed. It was nearly evening. As soon as the doctor entered the sick room, the boy shouted, Doctor, I am very hungry. Order some food for me. Of course, the doctor thought that the boy was in his senses. He did not know that the boy had not sufficient knowledge of the English language to express his ideas in that tongue. So the doctor asked his relations when he had taken food last. He was informed that the patient had nothing to eat for the last eight or ten hours. "'What would you like to have?' asked the doctor. "'Roast mutton and plenty of vegetables,' said the boy. By this time the doctor had approached the bedside, but it was too dark to see whether the eyes of the patient were open or not. "'But you are ill. Roast mutton will do you harm,' said the doctor. "'No, it won't. I know what is good for me,' said the patient." At this stage the doctor was informed that the patient did not really know much English, and that he was probably in delirium. A suggestion was also made that probably he was possessed by a ghost. The doctor who had been educated at the Calcutta Medical College did not quite believe the ghost theory. He, however, asked the patient who he was. In India, I do not know whether this is so in European countries, too. Lots of people are possessed by ghosts, and the ghost speaks through his victim. So generally a question like this is asked by the exorcist. Who are you, and why are you troubling the poor patient? The answer, I am told, is at once given, and the ghost says what he wants. Of course, I personally have never heard a ghost talk. I know a case in which a report was made to me that the wife of a groom of mine had become possessed by a ghost. On being asked what ghost it was, the woman reported to have said, the big ghost of the house across the drain. I ran to the outhouses to find how much was true, but when I reached the stables, the woman I was told was not talking. I found her in convulsions. To return to our story, the doctor asked the patient who he was. I am general, said the boy. Why are you here? asked the doctor. I shall tell you that after I've had my roast mutton and the vegetables, said the boy, or rather the ghost. But how can we be convinced that you are general? asked the doctor. Call Captain X, of the eleven Brahmins, and he will know, said the ghost. In the meantime, get me food, or I shall kill the patient. The father of the patient at once began to shout that he would get the mutton and the vegetables. The doctor in the meantime rushed out to procure some more medical assistance, as well as to fetch Captain X of the eleven Brahmins. The few big European officers of the station were also informed, and within a couple of hours the sick room was full of sensible, educated gentlemen. The mutton was in the meantime ready. The mutton is ready, said the doctor. "'Lower it into the well in the compound,' said the ghost. "'A basket was procured, and the mutton and the vegetables were lowered into the well. "'But scarcely had the basket gone down five yards. "'The well was over forty feet deep, when somebody from inside the well shouted, "'Take it away! Take it away! There is no salt in it!' "'Those that were responsible for the preparation had to admit their mistake. "'The basket was pulled out.' some salt was put in, and the basket was lowered down again. But as the basket went in about five or six yards, somebody from inside the well pulled it down with such force that the man who was lowering it narrowly escaped being dragged in. Fortunately, he let the rope slip through his hands, with the result that though he did not fall into the well, 
His hands were bleeding profusely. Nothing happened after that, and everybody returned to the patient. After a few minutes' silence, the patient said, Take away the rope and the basket. Why did you not tie the end of the rope to the post? Why did you pull it so hard? said one of the persons present. I was hungry and in a hurry, said the ghost. They asked several persons to go down into the well, but nobody would. At last a fishing hook was lowered down. The basket, which had at first completely disappeared, was now floating on the surface of the water. It was brought up quite empty. Captain X, in the meantime, had arrived and was taken to the patient. Two high officials of government, both Europeans, had also arrived. As soon as the captain stepped into the sick room, the patient, we shall now call him the ghost, said, Good evening, Captain X. These people will not believe that I am general, and I want to convince them. The captain was as surprised as the others had been before. You may ask me anything you like, Captain X, and I shall try to convince you, said the ghost. The captain stood staring. Speak, Captain X, are you dumb? said the ghost. I don't understand anything, stammered the captain. He was told everything by those present. After hearing it, the captain formulated a question from one of the military books. A correct reply was immediately given. Then followed a number of questions by the captain, the replies to all of which were promptly given by the ghost. After this, the ghost said, If you are all convinced, you may go now, and see me again tomorrow morning. Everybody quietly withdrew. The next morning there was a large gathering in the sick room. A number of European officers who had heard the story at the club on the previous evening dropped in. "'Introduce each of these newcomers to me,' said the ghost. Captain X introduced each person in solemn form. "'If anybody is curious to know anything, I shall tell them,' said the ghost. "'A few questions about England, position of buildings, shops, streets in London, were asked and correctly answered. After all the questions the Indian doctor who had been in attendance asked, "'Now, General,' that we are convinced you are so and so, why are you troubling this poor boy? His father is rich, said the ghost. Not very, said the doctor, but what do you want him to do? My tomb hat has been destroyed by a branch of a tree falling upon it. I want it to be properly repaired, said the ghost. I shall get that done immediately, said the father of the patient. "'If you do that within a week, I shall trouble your boy no longer,' said the ghost. "'The monument was repaired, and the boy has never been ill since. "'This is the whole story. "'A portion of it appeared in the papers, "'and there were several respectable witnesses, "'though the whole thing is too wonderful. "'Inexplicable as it is, "'it appears that dead persons are a bit jealous "'of the sanctity of their tombs.' I have heard a story of a boy troubled by a ghost who had inscribed his name on the tomb of a Mohammedan faker. His father had to repair the tomb and had to put an ornamental iron railing round it. Somehow or other the thing looks like a fairy tale. The readers may have heard stories like this themselves and thought them as mere idle gossip. I therefore reproduce here the whole of a letter as it appeared in the leader of Allahabad, India, on the 15th July, 1913. The letter is written by a man, who, I think, understands quite well what he is saying. A Supernatural Phenomenon Sir, it may probably interest your readers to read the account of a supernatural phenomenon that occurred a few days ago in the house of B. Rasiklal Mitra, B.A., District Surveyor, Hamirpur. He has been living with his family in a bungalow for about a year. It is a good small bungalow, with two central and several side rooms. There is a veranda on the south and an enclosure, which serves the purpose of a courtyard for the ladies on the north. On the eastern side of this enclosure is the kitchen, and on the western the privy. It has a big compound all round, and the southwest corner of which there is a tomb of some Shahid, known as the tomb of Pulan Sahid. 
at about five o'clock in the evening on twenty sixth june nineteen thirteen when mr mitra was out in office it was suddenly noticed that the southern portion of the privy was on fire people ran for rescue and by their timely assistance it was possible to completely extinguish the fire by means of water which they managed to get at the moment before the fire could do any real damage on learning of the fire the ladies and children all bewildered collected in a room ready to quit the building in case the fire was not checked or took a serious turn about a square foot of the thatch was burnt shortly after this another corner of the house was seen burning this was in the kitchen it was not a continuation of the former fire as the latter had been completely extinguished not even a smoke or a spark was left to kindle the two places are completely separated from each other being divided by an open courtyard of thirty yards in length and there is no connection between them at all there was no fire at the time in the kitchen even, and there were no outsiders besides the ladies and children who were shut up in a room. This, too, was extinguished without any damage having been done. By this time, Mr. Mitra and his several friends turned up on getting the news of the fire in his house. I was one of them. In short, the fire broke out in the house at seven different places within an hour or an hour and a half all these places situated so far apart from one another that one was astonished to find out how it broke out one after the other without any visible sign of the possibility of a fire from outside we were all at a loss to account for the breaking out of the fire to all appearance it broke out each time spontaneously and mysteriously the fact that the fire broke out so often as seven times within the short space of about an hour and a half each time at a different place without doing any perceptible damage to the thatching of the bungalow or to any other article of the occupant of the house is a mystery which remains to be solved after the last breaking out it was decided that the house must be vacated at once mr mitra and his family consequently removed to another house of padre almod sa about two hundred yards distance therefrom to the great astonishment of all nothing happened after the vacation of the house for the whole night next morning mr mitra came with his sister to have his morning meals prepared there thinking that there was no fire during the night to his great curiosity he found that the house was ablaze within ten or fifteen minutes of his arrival they removed at once everything and again was all right a day or two after he removed to a puka house within the town not easy to catch fire after settling his family in the new house mr mitra went to town mauda some twenty-one miles from the headquarters during the night following his departure a daughter of mr mitra aged about ten years saw in a dream a boy who called himself shahid baba the girl inquired of him about the reason of the fire breaking in her last residence and was told by him that she would witness curious scenes next morning after which she would be told the remedy morning came and it was not long before the fire broke out in the second story of the new house this was extinguished as easily as the previous ones and it did not cause any damage next came the turn of a dhoti of the girl mentioned above which was hanging in the house half of it was completely burnt down before the fire could be extinguished in succession the pillow wrapped in a bedding a sheet of another bedding and lastly the dhoti which the girl was wearing caught fire and were extinguished after they were nearly half destroyed mr mitra's son aged about four months was lying on a cot as soon as he was lifted up a portion of the bed on which he was lying was seen burning although the pillow was burnt down there was no mark of fire on the bedding neither the girl nor the boy received any injury most curious of all the papers enclosed in a box were burnt although the box remained closed b ganesh prasad munsif and the postmaster hearing of this went to the house and in their presence a mirzai of the girl which was spread over a cot in the courtyard caught fire spontaneously and was seen burning 
now the girl went to sleep again it was about noon she again saw the same boy in the dream she was told this time that if the tomb was whitewashed and a promise to repair it within three months made the trouble would cease they were also ordained to return to the house which they had left this command was soon obeyed by the troubled family which removed immediately after the tomb was whitewashed to the bungalow in which they were now peacefully living without the least disturbance or annoyance of any sort i leave to your readers to draw their own conclusions according to their own experiences of life and to form such opinion as they like permeshwar dial amist b a july nine back hill high court End of story 28